Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Sonic Multiverse. I think you guys know the drill by now, so let's just jump right in. A figure flew in at mock speed towards Eggman's Imperial Fortress. It was none other than Infinite, the brainwashed and partially roboticized fox once known as Miles Prower. Lord Eggman, I completed the assessment of the chemical plant breakout. Well, don't leave me in suspense. What happened? Revel Freedom Fighters Blaze and Silver invaded the chemical plant. But curiously, the breakout began before they reached the holding cells. Well then, who instigated the breakout, Infinite? Are you trying to tell me a ghost did it? Well, well boss, you, you have, have run into ghosts, ghosts in the, the past. past. Shut up, Cubot. I can assure you, sir. No specters were involved. Though most of our cameras were disabled during the breakout, a Red Wolf was apprehended by several egg ponds before Silver and Blaze assaulted them. So you're telling me that my highly advanced security system was overwhelmed by some nobody working for the Resistance? Eggman paused impressively. I suppose it doesn't matter either way. In just a few days, my master plan will be complete. Soon, I'll be rid of those stinking rebels, and this world will be mine to rule. Eggman turned towards Infinite. And as the ashes of those foolish heroes blow off into the wind, I'll have one man to thank for it all. The young fox, for the first time he could remember, smiled. Well, th thank you, my lord. It has been an honor to- If it wasn't for my genius intellect, this empire would have never begun, and the world wouldn't be set onto a better path under my heel. Ho ho ho! Now, Infinite, commence your daily routine. Inspect all the designated bases. You're already behind schedule. <sighs> right, Lord Eggman. And with no further comments, Infinite flew off to begin his patrol. Elsewhere, Silver and Blaze returned to Resistance HQ with the Rookie and report to everyone their findings. Sonic was alive. A sudden wave of relief rushed throughout the members of the Resistance, and even a particular pink hedgehog broke out into tears of joy at this news. With this new information, the Resistance unanimously agreed that they had to focus on saving Sonic as with his help, they might stand a chance at beating Eggman and his new army. The group began discussing the game plan. There are several death eggs around the globe. Sonic must be in one of them. But which one? Amy responded confidently. Well, Eggman wouldn't lock Sonic in just any death egg. He most likely has him captured in one of the most strongly defended ones. There are three death eggs that are constantly being surveyed by the egg fleet. He's most likely in one of those. I think our best course of action would be to divide and conquer. We'll divide up into groups of two. Once you get onto the Death Egg, free as many prisoners as you can. Hopefully Sonic should be among them. And then we can burn the thing to the ground, right? Um, yes, right. Amy paused to recompose herself. Silver, Blaze, your team won. Your job is to destroy the Death Egg hovering over Soliana's oceans. Understood, Commander. We won't let you down, Amy. Vector, Espio, your team too. You'll be destroying the Death Egg nearby Station Square. Understood, Commander. You can count on us. What about me? A voice came from the other side of the room. It was Charmy B. He was still badly injured from his previous encounter with Infinite. Amy scrambled to make up something quick. She didn't want Charmy going on a mission while he was still injured. Charmy, hey, um, you and Cream are Team 3. We need you to secure the base while we're gone. Charmy was overjoyed with this responsibility, while Cream gave a knowing smile. And finally, Gadget, you and me will be taking on the Death Egg hovering over Green Hill. Wait, 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 hold up. If you're not here, then how in God's name are we supposed to keep in contact? I'll take care of that. A figure entered the room. It was none other than former gun commander Tower. Sorry, I'm a bit late to the meeting, but I had to make a few calls. Gun may be no more, 
but our soldiers are more than willing to stand with the resistance, Commander Rose. Thank you, sir. We're going to need all the help we can get on this mission. No thanks needed. Now come on, our little blue hero isn't just going to arrive out of nowhere. Right! Resistance, charge! And with that, the team split up to take on their individual death eggs. Outside, as the heroes raced off in different directions, they hardly noticed a water monster lurking in the distance. It was none other than Chaos. The villain prepared to hunt down these heroes, but before Chaos could begin his chase, he heard a peculiar noise. Suddenly, a purple portal opened up, and emerging from it was a pint-sized, spiky blue hero. It was none other than Classic Sonic. The timeline-jumping hero was clearly confused by his new surroundings, but suddenly, as Chaos swiped at him, it became clear what he had to do. The two began to battle, and although Chaos Zero fought vigorously, in the end, it was Classic Sonic who won the scuffle. The Big Drip retreated into a puddle, disappearing into one of the many sewer lines. Now, with a moment to breathe, Classic Sonic began to think. The last thing he could remember was fighting Dr. Robotnik and the Phantom King in some purple void. After defeating them, their weird rock suddenly launched him through a portal, and he woke up here. Classic Sonic concluded that he must have simply been warped a couple miles away. He needed to get back to Never Lake to make sure that Knuckles and Tails were okay. So with that, the Hedgehog raced off into the sunset. But as he arrived at Never Lake, the young Echidna and Fox were nowhere to be seen. The pint-sized Sonic raced around, trying to find his friends. That's when he noticed in the distance a strange object. It almost looked like Angel Island, grounded once more. But something was off about it. Instead of a vast, glorious jungle, there was a mechanical, maniacal theme park spread across the landmass. And at the peak of this evil theme park was a peculiar pink light. Classic Sonic wasn't sure what was going on, but he had a hunch Robotnik must be behind this somehow. So Sonic raced towards the island, hoping to get some answers. Elsewhere, another pair of detectives are making their way towards the Death Egg in Station Square. All right, Victor, what's our plan to get up onto the Death Egg? Well, that thing's only a couple hundred feet in the air. I'm sure I can throw you up there, and you can do your little ninja trick to get on. Okay, then how are you getting on? I don't know, I haven't worked out all the details. My, the commander was right. You two really do need my help. The pair of detectives were taken off guard as Rouge the Bat appeared out of nowhere. Rouge, what are you doing here? Commander Tower called in all the reserve members of Gun he could. I was on the top of his list, of course. Yeah, well, we could have used your help earlier during the war. We lost a lot of good soldiers, you know. That's because we're heavily outgunned, Vector. I've been trying to fix that problem. The pair were once again confused. What do you mean, ma'am? <sighs> Omega was destroyed before the war began. He was sent to a different GUN facility for a complete overhaul. But by the time I came back to check on him, he was gone. I can only assume Eggman must have taken him. I've been going from Eggman base to Eggman base, trying to find any information I can on him. But nothing so far. I'm hoping I can learn something from one of these death eggs. And maybe we can save Sonic while we're at it. Vector now felt bad about how he reacted. He didn't realize Rouge had lost a partner as well. Hey, um, I'm sorry for snapping at you. It just... I understand. Stressful times. I've been a spy for a long time, Vector. Let's just get up there and find what we can. And with that, Rouge picked up the pair of Chaotix before flying them up towards the Death Egg. Back on the grounds of what was once Angel Island, Classic Sonic made his way through Eggman's ridiculously monstrous amusement park, Eggman Land. 
To the young hero's horror, hundreds of people were being held hostage by Dr. Eggman and being forced to slave away, loading up roller coasters with ammunition, missiles, and other weapons of war for Eggman's army. This wasn't just an amusement park. It was a military base. At the heart of the park was a hellish merry-go-round, with a pink aura emanating from the top of it. On a jumbotron attached to the ride appeared Dr. Eggman himself. Classic Sonic noted that this resembled the older Eggman he met during his incident with the Time Eater. It became clear to the pint-sized Sonic that he must have been sent through time, space, and possibly even dimensions. But before Classic Sonic could question the nature of his travel, the Mad Doctor's booming voice rung out throughout the park. Greetings, unvalued employees of Eggman Land. As you know, we are nearing the final stage of my conquest of Earth. You will all not be remembered in the slightest, but your efforts will ensure our total victory. As a reward, the public execution of Knuckles the Echidna will commence tonight. That Echidna really thought he could take back his island. Ho 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 ho. Single-handedly, in fact. Well, see you there. The Jumbotron swapped to live coverage of Knuckles, shackled at the top of the carousel, awaiting his fate. Classic Sonic knew he had to save his future friend, and raced up there to help. Though the pint-sized hero had to fight through several badniks to get there, before long, he made it to the top. To his surprise, there was something resembling the Master Emerald, but purple, in a strange version of the Master Emerald Altar. Of course, Classic Sonic didn't have time for this. He had to free Knuckles. He raced over to the Echidna to help. Classic Sonic ran over, trying to spin dash through Knuckles' restraints. The Echidna was surprised to see him. Wait, you're... That's Sonic from White Space, right? Y you gotta get out of here before it's too late. But it was already too late. Eggman's voice rung out across the loudspeakers. Well, 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 this is an unexpected development. You must be that pint-sized Sonic from the other time period. <laughs> How delightful. Oh, Executioner. Let's put on a show for the audience. A booming noise came from the bottom of the carousel. Something big was climbing up the structure. A gargantuan mecha, armed to the teeth with weaponry, approached the intruder. Foolish meatbag, you stand in the path of the Eggman Empire. Feel the wrath of E-123 Omega. And this is where we'll be leaving this what if for right now. What do you guys think will happen next? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'm ComicFan13, and I hope you have a good day.